I love my books, you guys. I'm really trying to like push myself to get rid of things, but I'm like, well, I don't, uh, I don't know, you know? Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen and today I am doing a massive unhaul for me. I think this is my first unhaul on this channel that's more than like 10 to 15 books. So I'm very excited and it's much needed. And there's a reason why this has happened and why I'm doing this. Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first one is that recently I've been getting into my library and really trying to be cognizant of my purchases and trying to use it. And in the process of doing this, I have come to the realization that my buying habits are trash and stupid. And before getting into all of that, I do love buying books. It, there's much joy to be had for going to a local bookstore, perusing the shelves, buying books. That's something we need to support our local bookstores. I totally get that. However, I feel like sometimes my either boredom or desire for new things has led to me picking up books that I don't necessarily need to own and possess on my shelves, considering I only have two. These two shelves are like basically it in my house for books. So what's been happening is I've been, I recently did a big like reorganization of my shelves and behind these stacks, I've been putting books that I'm not like prioritizing or I've read, but don't think I'm gonna pick up again for a while. And it's causing overflow on this side of the room, the stack sitting there. And I don't want those stacks there anymore until I get more space in a new house or something, which I don't plan to move anytime soon. So I'm like, okay, what do I do? Use the library, use eBooks, use audiobooks, other ways than just owning tangible books. And also one other thing with my reading habits has been, I have received books from publishers that at the time I've been excited about, or they just send them out to reviewers and I didn't request them and I'm just not really interested in them anymore or never was. And so those books I feel bad about getting rid of because I've either at the time expressed interest in it or agreed to a copy, but then now I'm like, I don't know if I need this. And then also it's been so much time that I've now seen them at my local library and I just don't need to have the ARC on my shelves anymore, if that makes sense. So I want to give them away and hopefully someone else can make use of them in little free libraries and such. So basically no tea, no shade for any of these really. Um, there might be a couple in here that I've read and I didn't enjoy and I'm getting rid of, but mostly it's books that I have duplicates of, books that I'm no longer interested in or can get at the library. I just don't need to own the book itself. Oh, and also I should say, some of these I'm not sure if I want to get rid of. So I wanted to film and see my ideas for this and whether I will pull the trigger on it. But also, I'm curious to know if there's any books that I put in the unhaul pile by the end of this video that you think I would like or that you love and you want to make the case for it, please let me know in the comments because a lot of these, I just did like a scouring of my shelves and I'm like, do I want you? I don't know. And then put it in the pile, but I could be persuaded. And there's some in here that I'm like, yeah, I think I do want to read you. Maybe. So we'll see. Okay, it's a lot of talking. Let's get into the unhaul, Let's get into the meat of it. So the first book I have is A Ton of French, The Searcher. And I wanna start with this because I think in the course of my life, I've never read a ton of French, but I've purchased almost every single one of her books. And why, why, like why? I've always been interested in her. My friend Grace, she loves a ton of French. So I've been wanting to try her, but I never do. And then I own them and I see them at the library and then I see them on Libby for rent. And I'm like, do I need to own this book until I actually try more of them? And then also with these books that are more like widely distributed, it'll probably be easy to find another copy of this book in the future should I really want to own it for some reason. So if you think I would like Tana French, let me know, but I just don't, I keep saying for the last like, truly like five or six years, I'm gonna read her and I never have. So will I really? It's doubtful, at least not for a while. So. I don't know, we'll see. Next up, I have Checkout 19 by Claire Louise Bennett. This is a book that I read a couple months ago and I felt kind of mixed on, but I loved what it was about and I really loved the first half of it and it kind of lost steam in the second half, but this is a book that's about books and about reading and I love books about that. So I think this is one that my patience at the time of reading this sort of waned by the end of it, but I think this is a really interesting piece of fiction that I would like to reread it's a very rare instance of a book that I felt mid on, but I think it was a me problem. So I think I'm going to keep it. Okay, next up I have a thriller of sorts. Book of the fucking month has really done me so dirty <laughs> in my life in terms of, you know, me accumulating credits and then me feeling like, damn, I should really use some credits this month. And I'm like, will I like this? Should I experiment with the credits through book of the month and then try something new? I would love to hear your thoughts on these. But the first one I have is Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. This one I think is like a crime thriller. And I think it's about, okay, so a black father, a white father, two dead sons and a quest for revenge and redemption. So it's a revenge story about fathers and their murder 
Gertrude Sons. It sounds really interesting. I've heard good things about S.A. Cosby, but I'm not a thriller guy, so I don't know if I'm gonna dig this. And I also saw the audiobook version of this on Scribd, which I am a member of, so if I ever did want to read it, I could get it there. So I don't know if I need to own this physically, and I don't think I'm gonna pick this up anytime soon, so I think I'm gonna get rid of it. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of it. Okay, the next two are arcs that I recently received that I'm just not that interested in. So I'm gonna put them in a little free library. First one is Matthew Quick, We Are the Light, which comes out in November. And 100 Saturdays by Michael Frank. I don't really remember what these synopses were for these, but I'm just not intrigued really. They kind of sound more commercial leaning. I know this one is from the author of The Silver Linings Playbook. They're not speaking to me. So I don't need them at this time. Next up is another arc. It's a thriller that I was sent by FSG, who are my favorites, but it has a John Grisham blurb. And I'm just like, is it me? Is it me? I don't know if it is. But since it's FSG, and I've been trying to keep an open mind about other genres and stuff, I would love to know if you've read this author, Chris Pavone. Chris Pavone? If you read this or this author, let me know, because I could be persuaded potentially. It also has a Maggie Shipstead blurb and a Stephen King blurb. Litfic plus horror plus John Grisham. Like, I don't know what this is. Let me know if you like this. Okay, next up, I have another book that I was sent. It's The Bartender's Cure by Wesley Stratton. This book came out in June. It just sounds quite commercial and that's just not something that I'm that interested in. But it's, it's a debut novel about an aspiring bartender at the perfect neighborhood bar filled with cocktail recipes and bartending lore. And you know me, I am the bar in the bookcase, so I was considering reading this, but I saw some mid reviews of it and life is short. So I just don't think this is going to be for me. So I'm going to pass on it. Next up, I have Chronicles from the Land of the Happiest People on Earth by Wol Soyinka. This is a gorgeous cover, like truly stunning. This one I saw at my library when I went recently, and I knew I've been sitting on this for a while. And it sounds very daunting. It's a very dense satire, I believe, set in an imaginary Nigeria. And I've heard really good things about this author. I think he's quite prolific. And I just haven't been in the mood for something this dense lately. At the end of the day, I did see this at my library. And so I'm not writing this book off completely, but I just don't think I need this copy with me in my house right now. So I'm going to pass on this one, I think. This is the maybe. I'm going to keep this in the maybes. Okay, next up I have Luster by Raven Leilani, which is one of my favorite books ever. But I have a finished copy of this, so I no longer need this arc copy. But this is one of the first arcs I ever received back in like 2020, so I haven't wanted to part with it because it's so pretty and shiny and sentimental. So maybe I'll keep this. No, Jalen, you don't need it. You don't need it. You have a copy of this book. You're never going to read this book. Okay, I'm getting rid of it. Okay, next up I have another book of the month book. It's The Knockout Queen by Ruthie Thorpe. Again, this is in the vein of commercial-ish, I believe, but I've also seen on Twitter and I think some like blurbs and some general hype when this book came out, I think like two years ago, that I might like it. I don't remember what it's about, but it says it's a dazzling and darkly comic novel of love, violence, and friendship in the California suburbs. So this is one I could be persuaded. And this is kind of popular. So if you read this and you think I'll like it, let me know, but I'm gonna put it in the discard pile for now, but that could change. Okay, next is a book that I bought full price, annoyingly, that I saw at my library. This is a moment of holding myself accountable, really thinking about what I'm doing with my habits. What books am I purchasing? Why am I doing this? You know what I mean? I'm trying to be way more intentional about what I'm doing because I could just be patient and then get this at the library if I wasn't sure that I wanted it, but I had to buy a book. I just had to go to the bookstore and buy something. I just had to. Annoying. But this one, I know my friend Grace really liked this book, Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud. This has some really interesting blurbs, namely from Marlon James, which sounds promising. And also this has an electrifying novel of an unconventional family in Trinidad, mended by their individual and collective quests for love. Admittedly, I really hate this cover. So that's kind of one reason why I haven't been inclined to pick it up. Do I need it? So like, should I read it soon? Or should I get a library copy when I'm ever, if ever, in the mood for it, you know? This is going to be a maybe as well. Let me know, especially because it's a finished copy. I'm like, should I just keep it? What are the standards here? I don't know. Another interesting situation. So I have Fiona and Jane by Jean Chen Ho. This was the first book that I read this year and I absolutely loved it. It's a collection of connected short stories following these two Taiwanese American women. And the stories are sort of anchored by their friendship, but not 
too much really about their friendship. It's more so two character studies that are at their core anchored by this friendship that's a through line throughout their entire lives, which is really cool. And I remember taking notes on every single story that I read in here. I was like fully digging it. But since then, I haven't thought about this book as much. And I just don't see myself ever truly rereading it. Like if I ever wanted to go back and think about the, these stories again, I would probably just check out like my notes again and just like check that out. And if I ever really felt compelled to, I would just go to the library and try to find a copy of it, you know? So I think I'm going to pass this on to someone that might enjoy this more than me at this time. Yeah. Next up I have Hurricane Girl by Marcy Dramansky. This book I read a couple months ago and I felt kind of mid on it. It was really fun in the moment. We have this woman, her house is blown away in a hurricane and then she gets picked up by this guy who's like a newscaster and takes her to his house and then he assaults her. And then after that she's bleeding from her head, escapes this guy and is trying to figure out like what does she do with her life. So it's a very plotty, very dry and dark and it's telling but the sentences in the general pro style here I wasn't the biggest fan of. It was just very simplistic but like in the moment it's a perfect like beach read, summer read with sort of like dark undertones and some interesting ideas about like trying to rehabilitate your life after crazy shit has happened to you. I just don't think I'm ever going to read this again but it is a lovely cover but I'm going to pass it on. Okay next up another interesting case here is The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan. This book came out back in January and I remember seeing like the most wild buzz for this book. Like this book was everywhere on Bookstagram. I kept seeing stuff on Twitter about it, people saying it like changed their lives. But then I've had two or three friends say that this book is like not great or just like incredibly plotty. After like hearing my friends tell me like Jalen just pass it like you're not gonna love it, I trust them to lead me in the right direction. And I saw this at my library so I don't need this copy even though it's very pretty with the gold foiling and everything, but I'm gonna pass it on. This is another one that's interesting. I keep saying that about every book. I love my books, you guys. I'm really trying to like push myself to get rid of things, but I'm like, well, I don't, uh, I don't know, you know? This one is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is a book I read, I think like two-ish years ago, and I loved it. It was one of my favorite books of the year, that year. I think it's an excellent character study. You know what this book is about. It's been everywhere, very likely, if you're on any sort of bookish internet. Will I read this again? probably not anytime soon to be honest and if I ever really felt compelled to read this again I would find like a new used copy or go to the library and find it again I just don't think I'm going to read it anytime soon so I don't really have the space for those kind of books on my shelves so passing that on next up is a book that I think I'm going to keep but I pulled it because I haven't looked at this book in a while it's Lot 6 a memoir by David Ajmi I just looked at this right now when I was pulling it and it has blurbs from Ellis Bottman Olivia Lang and Melissa Phoebos. And I'm like, hold up, wait a minute. This sounds compelling. I, I like those writers and I really want to see what this is about. So I guess he's a playwright born into the ruins of a Syrian Jewish family that once had it all. David is painfully displaced in Brooklyn in the 1970s. Okay, I'm keeping this. I just wanted to remind myself what it was about. So keeping that. Ooh. Okay, controversial. I need y'all to help me out on this one. I received a lovely package. And in this package, which I have kept because I like these book boxes, it is To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara. And this has to be the most controversial book that's been released in the last like two years, I want to say, in terms of hype and then just the general mixed vibes that it's getting. I feel like Latvona by Otessa Moshevig is another one. Also black covers with blue font. Interesting through line there. I need y'all to tell me, like, do I read this book? Like, should I? I DNF'd A Little Life for other reasons, and I have not read People in the Trees. So I haven't really read Hanyan Gahara in full ever, but this book sounds at once very interesting to me. I love books that are ambitious in structure. This is told in three parts in three different time periods. Speculative fiction sounds intriguing, but I've also heard from people that I really trust that it's one of the worst books they've ever read in their lives. And then also from people that I trust said that they really enjoyed it and that there's a lot to get from it and that they thought it was unfairly getting panned. So I'm like, what do I do? You know? I did see this at my library though. That is another factor here. I saw it recently in the new release shelves just sitting there. I'm inclined to keep this though because it's paperback since it's a proof and I like the floppiness of it. I'm leaning keep in the event that I see something that really makes me want to read this or just to see what I think of it myself. I don't know. We'll see. It's going into maybe keep section of the piles. Next I have Bewilderment by Richard Powers. This one was also one of those books that was very hyped after his last book The Overstory but I've seen incredibly mixed things and I just haven't really been that inclined to read it since the award buzz of last year has since passed. I'm just like do I want to read this anytime soon? I don't know. 
And it's also one that's quite popular, so I know I can find a copy if I do get rid of this one. But this is going in the maybe pile. Next up is The Swallowed Man by Edward Carey. This book I read last year and I really, really enjoyed it. It's a Pinocchio retelling that has a lot of interesting art in it. And it was just really entertaining and I just really liked the reading experience of it. And I like this cover. I like Riverhead books, but I'm like, will I read this again? Probably not. So yeah, I'm gonna get rid of it. Another one I'm kind of unsure about. It's ta Coates' The Water Dancer. I have a book of the month edition of this. This was an Oprah Book Club pick. This book was very buzzy when it came out, I think like two years ago. I've seen like 20 copies of this at the library, and so I don't know if I need to have this copy. But I've seen a lot of mixings on this one too, and it has magical realism elements. I've heard both incredible things about this and also very, very mixed things. So I just don't know at this time if I need to have a copy of it. This is going in the maybe leaning discard pile. Okay, next I have a children's Bible by Lydia Millet. This one was on the National Book Award. Is it a long list? I think the, the long list, like the list of 10 books that comes out. My toxic trait is thinking that I'm going to read a full book awards long list and I literally never do. So I don't know why in the moment I'm so excited and feeling the buzz and I just buy books and I'm like, this needs to stop. And I and I know this about myself now. I've been using the library for the booker long list, which I've now since realized that I'm probably not gonna read all of. And thank God that I did because why? Stop buying books, Jalen. I'm looking at you in the viewfinder. Stop buying books. But this one is a retelling of like a biblical story, I think, about teenage alienation and adult complacency in an unraveling world. I'll library it if I ever want to read it. I do like a small hardcover though. Points for small hardcovers and it doesn't take up that much space on the shelves. This is a maybe leaning get rid of. Okay, next I have Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. I bought this book years ago. I love collecting first editions, especially of books that are like quite popular like this one, but guaranteed we'll never read this again in my life. I really loved it when it came out, but I've seen the, the TV show adaptation. I know the story. I'm not gonna go back for the language or anything, so this is a pass for me. I'm gonna get rid of it, finally. Next I have Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jossi. This is a book that I really, really enjoyed reading last year. It's a signed first edition, and I love this cover, and I love, if a book has gold foiling, I'm going to keep it. Like, that just is what it is. So I had to switch to my phone. Sorry, everyone. I don't want to keep books just because I love the covers. I'm gonna pass it on. But look how stun- look how ooh, look how stunning. Should I add it to the maybe pile? Okay, no. Getting rid of it. I have Monogamy by Sue Miller, another book that I keep seeing in my library. How many times will I say it? I just don't need to own it. This is a book that I purchased because I love books about like marriage and infidelity. A husband who dies and then the wife realizes that her husband had been cheating on her while they were married and hurt like the fallout from that. So it sounds like drama, but I don't think I need to own it. I'm gonna put in the maybe. Eh, no, I'm getting rid of it. Okay, next up I have There, There by Tommy Orange. This is a book that I unintentionally sort of DNF'd like three years ago, but I don't know if I'm gonna read it. I mean, I don't know. I think he has a new book coming out soon, like this year or next year. And I would like to give this another try now that I have a better sense of my reading. And I think I'm going to like this, knowing my taste. So I think I'm gonna keep it. I have a Brown Girls, which was, I think was the second book that I read this year. Really interesting book told in a collective we in Queens, New York. And I really liked it. It's told in a bunch of vignettes in that collective voice, which is really interesting, but it was a very like single sitting read. I don't think I'm gonna read it again. So I'm gonna pass it on. Next up I have Jillian Flynn. I have read Sharp Objects. I only read like 20% of Dark Places. And I love Sharp Objects. Like, I truly was obsessed with this when I read it. I've watched the show, though, and I just don't think I'm going to read this again. In Dark Places, I don't read thrillers that much anymore, so do I need to own these? I don't. Getting rid of them. Next up, I have The Evening Hour by Carter Sickles. He wrote The Prettiest Star, I think that's what it's called, which I have on my shelves, which I kept, and I have not read it yet. So maybe I'll keep, I'm going to keep this one to see if I like that book, and then I'll have this ready to go if I do like it. But this one, I didn't like see, search it out myself and I haven't heard anything about this book, so I just don't know if I'm gonna like it. But I guess I'll keep this for now. Goddamn, A Little Life, y'all. I don't know what to do about this book. I have tried to read it. I got about 150 pages in. I was waiting the entire time to cry, wondering when the trauma was happening, seeing so many people talk about this book, just knowing that something was coming, waiting for the trauma to happen. I was not enjoying myself. The writing was good. I was interested. Like if I had read this years ago before everyone lost their damn minds over it, I would have probably enjoyed it and been messed up over it. But also when I was deciding at that point to continue reading with this or not, I was on Goodreads mistake and I got completely spoiled for this book. I had the wrong assumption about what was going to happen in this book and then I was spoiled and I was like, I 
you know what? I just don't. I don't know. But I would like to read this book at some point. Would I? It's going in the maybe. It's going in the maybe. I don't know. I don't know. This is a book I'm just gonna have in my shelves the rest of my life, being like, hmm, should you try it again? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've been so conflicted about that book for so long. I should probably just get rid of it. I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> growth. That's what they call growth. Peter Collar, Sheila Hetty, one of my favorite books of all time. I have an extra copy. Getting rid of the extra copy. Carl of Knausgaard, The Morning Star. I read like 200 and something pages of this. This is a, as Noelle Gallagher would say, a big bitch, I must say. But I was not loving this. But so many authors that I admire, like true, like some of my favorite authors love him and this book. Interesting character studies, but I just was like, where is this going? Like this is too long for me to feel like not giving, you know what I mean? I'm gonna keep it though. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. Thrust by Lydia Yuknovich. The publisher sent me this copy. With the copy, they sent chocolate. <laughs> I just thought of Junja Balaya. It's chocolate. It's get, it's chocolate. It's chocolate. I live in Phoenix and they sent me another copy. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. I got a lot of the chocolate off, thankfully. It's chocolate. <laughs> it's chocolate. I have Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I'm only getting rid of this because the publisher sent me a finished copy and I got this from Book of the Month when I was trying to use up my credits because I was not using it that much and I was like, okay, let's cancel the subscription. What do I buy? I pick this so I don't need this copy, extra copy that I have. But I'm going to read this soon. I think like in the next few weeks, this is coming up for me. I'm very excited in this cover. I'm obsessed with this cover. It's so cool. Okay, next up I have Liar Mouth by John Waters. I purchased this book because Otessa Moshveg, queen of my life, blurbed it. I read like 10% of it and it was just very like slapstick. The events that ensued were so like unrealistic and just weird and trying to be sort of like toilet humor-y and I was just was not digging it. And so I also then so annoyed because I bought this book and then when I went like last week to the library, new copy sitting on the new release shelves. Why? Why do I do this? This is like the true lesson learned for me. Kind of what sparked this video. I'm like, wait a minute. I just enough this. I could have saved the money on this book. Anyways, I have an extra copy of Latfona. I'm gonna give it to my friend. The Colony by Audrey McGee. I just read this this month or last month and I enjoyed it, but it's sort of leaving me the longer that I sit with it. We'll never read this again, I don't think. It was good in the moment, but I'm just like, I'm never gonna revisit this book, I don't think. But it was good, but I don't need to own it any longer. Next up, I have New Animal by Ella Baxter. I just read this with CJ for the Sunny's Book Club live stream that happened on, I think on Saturday it was. And we both felt kind of mid on this, so I just don't need this copy anymore. Next, I have Nobody, Somebody, Anybody by Kelly McClory. This is very much book talk, sad girl fiction, I think, in the vein of Otessa Moshveg, very clearly inspired by my year of wrestling relaxation. But I've had some people that really love this book, but I saw this at the library, so I don't need this. I am not really compelled to read it that much. So I'm gonna pass for now. Next, I have All My Mother's Lovers by Ilana Massad. I think it's about a mother and daughter relationship that's quite fraught, but I have not been compelled to read this in the two years since I've had this, so I'm gonna pass it on. A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. I don't often read horror that much these days. It's kind of rare and far between, but this is one, I haven't been compelled to read this in the last like three years that I've owned it. So I think I'm gonna pass on this one, but he's an author that I do wanna check out. He's quite popular in the horror realm. So if you like him, let me know. Great Circle arc, getting rid of it because I have a finished paperback copy that I still need to read. I'm very late to the party with this one, but I think I'm gonna love it. Next, I don't know what to do with this book. It's The New Wilderness by Diane Cook. This was on the Booker shortlist like two years ago. This one is dystopian, I believe. I kind of forget what it's about, but I think it's again about mother-daughter relationship. Dystopian, I believe, cli-fi adjacent. Could be a library book, you know? It's going in the maybe. Next, I ordered this Jonathan Franzen essay collection. Does that make you not want to cry? Like that's so sad. But anyways, I bought it from Book Outlet and they sent me this and they sent me a new one. So I don't need this one anymore. Next, I don't know what to do about this either. It's Gideon the Ninth by Tasman Muir. Muir? This is a book I have had for a while now and this one seems to be quite popular in like the sci-fi fantasy adjacent circles. I have not read genre fiction in this vein in quite a while, especially nothing that's this like fantasy leaning, but I've been thinking about doing for like a year now, a video like reading outside of my comfort zone. And this is one that I wanted to check out because it's like queer, lesbian necromancers in space, I guess. But I could be persuaded to get rid of this if it's like not gonna be my thing. I just have no idea if it's my thing or not. So 
this is a maybe. The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. Again, this is genre fiction, sci-fi. I think it's about like a husband that cheats on his wife with her clone, which sounded really interesting to me when I was looking for something plotty, but I've seen numerous reviews saying this book fucking sucks. So I don't know. I'm getting rid of it. I'm getting rid of it. I'm, I know I'm not gonna read it. Okay, next, I really need your help with this one or the next two or three. <laughs> it's Dune by Frank Herbert. For some reason, two or three years ago, I saw this and I was like, yeah, I, I would like to read Dune. It sounds cool. The Timothy Chalamet movie was coming out soon and this just looked gorgeous and I hear it's a classic. So I was like, do I read this? Like, will this nice special edition for $40 make me read this any sooner? I think I'm gonna keep this purely for a book as an object. It's just cool to have. And will I read it? I don't know. I've seen people say that this is the best book ever. People say it's not all that. Let me know if you think I personally would like Dune because I really need the help to know if I'm being unrealistic with my expectations for this book. I haven't even seen the movie since it came out either. So book is object keeping it, I suppose. I suppose. Another one that is quite beloved, but also quite controversial. It's The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is another one I was gonna read for like a genre fiction, will I like it kind of book about a girl I think that like can live forever or something and it's a romance, but I heard it's too long and boring and like overhyped. Maybe I'll keep it for that kind of a video if you're interested in watching that, but also if you think this book sucks and I won't like it, please let me know. It's going in the maybes. Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Dower. Dower. I have not read his very famous book, All the Light We Cannot See, but this is also sci-fi, ish, huge. Whenever I heard about this book and when I read the synopsis upon receiving this, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. I'm truly never inclined to pick it up. I'm getting rid of it. I'm doing it. Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. I don't know where or when I purchased this book, but I keep seeing it on my shelves and I'm like, what is this? Like, I don't know why, I don't, I truly don't know where I got this from. And I know Emma Donahue is quite popular. I think I saw someone talk about it like on Bookstagram or something and I was like, that sounds interesting. But I saw this at my library again and I was like, I could just get rid of this and if I ever for some reason feel inclined to pick this up I can maybe get it there. I don't know. This is a maybe as well. Okay, that is it for the unhaul This has been really fun to see what's on my shelves. What do I keep? Why do I keep certain books? Forcing myself to get rid of books that I know I'm not gonna read again I really like considering books as objects and thinking about why we build our libraries and how we build them and what should be on them For me personally, I want books that are either books that I absolutely love or very excited for know that I'm gonna read or at the time think I'm gonna read and then everything else, I don't need to own it, you know? Again, yeah, if there's any book here that you want me to keep for whatever reason, you think I'll like it, please let me know. But anyways, I will catch you all in the next one. Bye.